praise the Lord. I'm back again, and um, I'm going to start with uh, Luke. Um, the chapter of Luke, a three, sixteen through seventeen. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay, this is one of the scriptures that they believe is the fire baptism, which it is, it's a fire baptism, but they believe that this is after death, not before. They believe that this is a baptism of fire that is going to clean up all souls, whether uh, sinners, atheists, uh, animal husband, uh, I was going to say animal husbandry, uh, uh, anybody having sex with animals, uh, everybody, homosexuals, lesbians, will be burned with this fire that they are talking about and saying that this is the way that God is going to clean up all sinners. And uh, this is not true. The fire and the Holy Ghost is just what it is. Holy Ghost fire. Jeremiah said that it was shut up in my bones. But Jeremiah was a righteous man also. The Spirit of God cannot dwell in an unclean vessel. It can't. It, can't, it cannot reside in anything that is unclean. Because God said that I that He was a light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So He cannot dwell in an unclean soul. Hallelujah! You've got to be righteous. And then they fail to read on down. Um, verse 17, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garners, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And um, I wanted to know what was the fan that they were talking about, that Jesus said that he was going to come with a fan in his hand. Do you know that this fan means um, a separation of the good and the bad wheat? It's a separation. They take this and um, when the wind is, the, the, I believe, the wind is the breath of God. The fan is the breath of God. And when the natural wheat and a barley or whatever is not, let's see, thorns and thistles and whatever is mixed in with that wheat, they will throw that up and the wind will blow the chaff away and the good wheat will fall into the basket. The fan of God. I'm going to read that because I, was, I had to look that up to see what the fan would be. Hallelujah. And I still believe that it's the breath of God blowing on the wheat and the tares and separating them like the sheep and the goats in the time of judgment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let me see. I, I've written something. 
on the fan. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fan. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, I have to get that. I might get that in another time, but um, I did read about the fan that was in the hand of Jesus. And that came right after that scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, here it is. The fan in his hand means to scatter, disperse. To winnow, as implying to hostility uh, that would be uh, stripping. Um, so this is in the hand of Jesus when he comes. It says, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. What, and, 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 and this fire is not going to clean up sinners. This fire is going to separate them from the Christians and the unbelievers. There's, there's no way. I mean, I would love for everyone to go to heaven, and so does God. God wants everyone to go to heaven. But if they refuse, see, that is their decision. They refuse. If they refuse Jesus Christ, they are refusing God also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Second Chronicles 15 and 2. The Spirit of God came on Ezra, the son of Obed, and he went out To, um, to meet Asa. He says, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he shall be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. This is in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. God has always said, if you are with me and for me, I will be with you. You've got to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You have to seek him, and he will be found of you. This is one of the, the uh, uh, promises of God, that if we seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, if you refuse him, he can only refuse you. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. The dressing room is here on earth, not after death. A man or a woman that doesn't know Christ, even a child up to 12, and under in this day and time, because you see children that, are, that were in the first grade asking a teacher, why does girls stink down below? Now, how would they know about little girls stinking down below if they aren't doing something themselves? Now, God will judge. God will judge all, all things. He is the judge. I'm not. But the dressing room is here on the earth. I read that to you in Titus 2 and 11. You could read it again. It says in this day and time that you ought to be ready. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. In Luke 3 and 6, it says, All flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord, everyone will see Jesus return, and some will rejoice, and some will curse the day of his coming. Do you all understand this? The atheists that say that there is no God, the man or the woman, which would be an atheist, that swears that there is no God. And, and David said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And here it's saying that, that um, anyone, that uh, everyone will see the salvation of the Lord. All flesh will see the salvation of the Lord. Everyone will see Jesus' return. And some will rejoice and some will will curse the day that he does. Hallelujah. Then in, in Luke 23 and 30, it says, Then shall they say unto the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. And, and that, would be, that will be because they didn't believe in the beginning. And after Jesus comes, it's going to be too late. And they will still swear that there was no God. And they'll ask the hills to cover them. And they'll ask the mountains to fall on them. To try and get out of the judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in Luke 5, 32, he says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came to call sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Which means that those of you who are preaching inclusions, you need to repent. Because you're lying to the people. John 3, 15, 16 through 17. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Hallelujah. John 4, 3 and 4. And every spirit that would be man, who is a living spirit, that would be right now, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. You could see it all over YouTube. You could see where the, the atheists have a proud station, a proud channel debunking the power of God. They are the Antichrist. They are the ones who do not believe that there is a God. And when the time comes, they will scream and curse God for coming because they believe that he was not. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and it says that the Antichrist was, is already here. It's, the Antichrist is already in the world. They said, Paul said it back then that the Antichrist was already there. And as we read it today, the Antichrist is here. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye present yourself a living sacrifice, holy acceptable acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable day acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me read that again. And that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's also found in Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. Even our righteousness as being Christians is as filthy rags in the eyes of God. If our righteousness, do you all know what those rags are? In the Old Testament, when women, they didn't have uh, pads or uh, tampons, they sat on rags, they sat on anything until their period was over. And then they would throw those rags in a pile and you can imagine the stink of that stuff sitting outside, piling up blood from all, all walks of life, from every woman. God said that our righteousness is as filthy rags in his nostrils. And you're going to tell me that the sinner, the atheist, is going to... Uh, be cleansed on his day of, of death, waiting for judgment. The stench of those people is already going up to God because they have an antichrist spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But they have got to come through the door, Jesus Christ. In him crucified. You be blessed and highly favored of the Lord as I also am blessed and highly favored of the Lord.